A conservative professor, at least I'm assuming he's a conservative professor, I could be wrong, said illegal immigrants can hurt U.S. economy. This was one of his arguments in his class, prompting calls for his firing. Because universities are overwhelmingly woke. Not entirely. I did some interviews at Berkeley and found many students who were a bit progressive, but were really angry over all the protests and the over, you know, overly woke behavior because it was disruptive, it cost money, it was wasteful, and it hurt them. But now we're seeing somebody who is standing up, said, if you are going to reward illegal immigrants, there will be more illegal, immig illegal immigrants. He's an associate professor of history, Georgia Gwinnett College. He's also said many other offensive things. So if you think that should matter, you're probably not going to enjoy, going to enjoy <clears throat> excuse me, this video. But let's read the story and see what's happening. They, he, he said a bunch of things about Ill illegal immigration. Before we get started, go to TimCast.com slash donate if you'd like to support my work. Multiple ways you can donate. The best way to support the channel, presumably for now, unless I get demonetized, is to like, comment, share, and subscribe. The engagement really helps. Fox News writes, a college professor in Georgia is drawing criticism for his online comments about illegal immigrants, including his contention that people in the U.S. illegally can be a drain on the nation's economy. He said, if you are going to reward illegal immigrants, there will be more illegal immigrants. That's true. Absolutely. It's not a negative statement. It's just a fact. If you incentivize behavior, you get more of that. He goes on. Uh, they say, Fang Zhao, an associate professor of history at Georgia Gwinnett College near Atlanta, told the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Zhao says he welcomes the criticism, including from those who say he should lose his job, according to the report. I am against political correctness, Zhao, a legal immigrant from China, told the newspaper. I speak truth to power in class, and my students learn about the financial drain of illegal immigration on the economy and the high crime rates of illegal immigrants. My students are woke and are overwhelmingly against illegal immigration after taking my class, he added. But Zhao told the paper he does not force students to share his opinions. His critics, however, argue that many of Zhao's assertions have been debunked and they object to some of those terms he uses in his comments, such as libtards and <laughs> ghetto thugs. That, I, I disagree with that language. One such critic, according to the report, is Georgia State Rep. B. Nguyen, the first Vietnamese American elected to the state's House of Representatives. Nguyen posted some of Zhao's comments on Twitter this week and asked her followers, are these the values supported by Georgia Gwinnett College? You see what they do. This is a really, really important uh, statement. You need, to, you need to understand this. If you did not see my video from yesterday, I published a leaked email from a journalist at Slate where she essentially says that because Chase provided financial services to a Proud Boy for his shop, usage, she, she referred to it as usage of this service in support of such groups. Seemingly, my, my, the way I see it, she's trying to imply that Chase supports the Proud Boys and what they believe in instead of just providing a service like any other business. You can see how this is reflected by activists. They use the same language. Are these the values supported by Gwinnett College? No, it's an individual who said something. The college supports many individuals with different opinions. If the college has two professors and one is a communist and one's a capitalist, are you going to argue they support both communism and capitalism? No. They support the free exchange of ideas because young people need to learn how the world works. Well, let's, uh, let's continue. She says, while we celebrate the passage of the Dream Act, which I add passed the House is my understanding and will likely not pass the Senate. We'll, we'll see what happens. Trump would surely veto it because there's no quid pro quo. This Georgia Gwinnett professor uses hostile terms, ghetto thugs, libtards, and spreads false narratives about immigrants. Are these the values supported by Gwinnett College? You see, that's a big mistake, you know, many of these people make. There's absolutely no reason to insult and degrade people with these kinds of words. I don't use them. Absolutely not. And when I do say things like social justice warrior, I tend to do air quotes. And it's typically, you know, you actually see them refer to themselves in this way. I will call them social justice activists. I do not believe there's anything to gain by using phrases like ghetto thugs. And I denounce the usage of that language because it's absolutely going to be weaponized against you to target the emotions of other individuals and using those words simply it, it, I believe the only reason people use them is to target the emotions of the other side. It is a waste of time and it is detrimental to the ab actual argument. So if you want, so, so, so here's the thing. Do I think people have a right to say these things? Of course, of course. I just think it's, it, it's, it's counterproductive. 
by all means, Bean Nguyen can say whatever she wants about this professor. But look what she's doing. She's not actually calling out what the narratives are that are false. She's just saying, look what he said. He said mean words. It's an extremely effective tactic for deplatforming. And it may result in this guy getting fired, though I don't necessarily believe. I, I, we'll see what happens. You know, it's, it's to be seen. And then she links. This is an extremely effective tactic. It, our, our culture is extremely fragile right now. Our institutions have no spine and they can't take being called mean. And so there you go. This is what ends up happening. She targets the professor, not based on what he's saying in terms of ideas and, and, and policy and economics, but just because he's mean and said mean words. But you know what? It works. That's one of the biggest things our culture needs to, to solve. If you sell a product and someone comes to you and freaks out, for the love of God, just, just tell them to buzz off. We just saw that bakery at Oberlin College, the video earlier today, win a million dollars, I'm sorry, $11 million, maybe even 33. That's what you say to these people when they smear and defame you. You say, I'll see you in court. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. But what happens? These big corporations are terrified of the mean words. So they bend over backwards for like 30 random people on the internet. Yeah, great. What do you think is going to happen if, if our society continues this way? Actual professors are going to be removed from their jobs. So anyway, long story short, don't be mean. Just don't. Seriously, there's no reason to be. You're allowed to be, sure, but you know, it's, it's one of the most mind-numbing things to me to see people like this professor use these phrases and words to refer to people because what does it do to allow you to succeed in your goals? One of the things I hate more than anything is inefficiency. I, I, I tell you now, when I watch people doing something wrong, it really frustrates me. And I look at this and I'm like, listen, man, you know they're going to weaponize this language against you. You're free to do it. I'm not going to stop you from doing it, but I will absolutely criticize you for one. There's no reason to attack people in this way. First and foremost, just don't do it. For, but two, it is one of the most ineffective things you can do, and it makes it easy to target you. Now, look, I get it. In the term, you know, in Vo with Vox and Crowder and all that, Crowder's a comedian. Trevor Noah and, and Samantha B, they do the same thing. So it is a double standard. But hey, there you go. You know the rules. OK, the rules aren't fair, not fair at all. You still have to play by them. You still have to figure out what you can do to navigate that system to get what you want. And, and calling people names doesn't solve that problem. Back to the story. She said, uh, so I read her quote already. College officials did not respond directly to the, to the newspaper's request for comment, but shared the school's academic freedom policy, which stipulates that faculty members are allowed to express their views without fear of censure. Wow, I am great. I, that is impressive. And I, I think that's absolutely incredible. The same policy, however, told faculty members that they should remember that the public may judge their profession and the college by what they see and write. But, but hey, I want to see more defense of freedom of speech. I want to see this guy be allowed to say whatever he wants. Yep. Guess what? Sometimes people are mean. One of the most mind blowing things that we've seen, you know, as of lately, is this weird, this weird behavior from the, these like left wing individuals, these leftist regressive, whatever you want to call them, where they're advocating for some kind of authority figure to dictate to the people. They're authoritarians. Let, 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 me, let me put it this way. Let's say this professor and an illegal immigrant are standing in the middle of the woods and the professor calls them some awful name. Or let's say Steven Crowder and Carlos Maza are standing in the middle of, in the middle of the woods and Crowder calls Carlos Miles of the worst names you can imagine. What happens? Literally nothing. Nothing. There's no one to step in. There's no stopping Stephen Crowder from being mean. That's how the world works. But guess what? The words do nothing. Carlos Maza can simply turn around and walk away. No, no, they don't want to do that, though. The goal isn't to stop Crowder and others from saying these things. It's not from stopping this professor from saying these things. It's just to remove their idea from the marketplace. This guy's talking about illegal immigrants. They found an attack vector. He said naughty words. I'm surprised people repeatedly try to give him the attack vector. Why would you do that? You want to talk about your ideas? Don't play that game. You know they will take you down. It's almost like, like I imagine it like you're on a, you're on a horse and you, you, you know the horse is a broken leg and they're going to attack that horse's broken leg. You know where the weak point is. Why would you allow them to exploit that? It's mind blowing. But I want to do one more thing before signing off on this video. Keemstar tweeted this a few days ago. I did make reference to it. I want to make reference to it one more time because this is the perfect example of where many of us who are not conservatives are in this political battle. He said, I never see conservatives trying to deplatform the left, but 
It's always the left trying to deplatform conservatives. And for an independent like myself and many others, it forces us to take the side of the conservatives. Plain and simple. I'm not a conservative, but the left is going after regular people and accusing them of being, you know, alt-right or whatever. And sure enough, excuse me, someone then says, the right are constantly trying to deplatform the left. Just ask ContraPoints, Sean, Three Arrows, The Serfs, Creationist Cat, Sam Cedar, David Pakman, excuse me, Vosh and Rational Disconnect. Wrong. Here's the thing. The people who are trying to deplatform these creators are certainly not conservatives. They're, they're more likely to be, as, as Paul Joseph Watson has referred to them, right-wing SJWs. It is a fringe and small group, typically, of like the identitarian right that are not mainstream and are denounced by conservatives. But this is what they do. The regressive left purposefully conflates the two groups to deplatform regular people, like a professor who's critical of a policy. They say, oh, oh, he's, he's too similar to this group. They're the same thing. No, that's not how it works. Okay. No one on the right in terms of mainstream American politics is trying to get contra points banned. Absolutely not. Never happened. Did Crowder try and get Carl Smaza banned for the hateful violence? Nope. Just point out the double standard. And, and, and in fact, Crowder even said not to dox, not to harass. But here we go. I'll leave it there. Um, stick around. More segments to come. Next video will be youtube.com slash Timcast, different channel at 4 p.m. For those on the podcast, the arrangement's usually different, but uh, I will see you all in the next story. Thanks for hanging out.